Hello, and thank you for watching the video abstract for the paper entitled Species Delimitation and Global Biosecurity. My name is Laura Boykin, and I'm at the Bioprotection Research Center at Lincoln University in Lincoln, New Zealand. My co-authors for the paper are Karen Armstrong, who's also here at Lincoln University, Laura Kabadko at The Ohio State University in the United States, and Paul DeBarro, who's at the CSIRO in Australia. Our study asks the fundamental question in phylogenetics, where on a given phylogeny do you draw the species line? I think all of us working in phylogenetics have been faced with this problem at one time or another. We want to point out that the measures, statistics, and approaches applied in our paper are applicable to all organisms. We chose to take a global biosecurity angle on the species delimitation issue by using two cytochrome oxidase data sets from two highly invasive insect pests. One of our main goals was to bring together evolutionary biologists who are working on species delimitation measures and statistics and regulatory personnel. We wanted the evolutionary biologists to realize the applicability of their species delimitation measures and statistics, and we wanted the regulatory personnel to realize that those statistics and measures could be and should be used when making key decisions when involving highly invasive species. To address this question, we've developed a novel tip-to-root approach for assessing taxonomic distinctiveness, which removes subjectivity from species delimitation. A brief description of our paper is to follow. The organisms of interest for our study are Bamesia tabaci and Limantia dispar. Both are highly invasive insect pests that cause millions of dollars in damage each year. We want to know how many species there are for each and who cares. On the left, you'll see there are 24 genetic groups for Bamesia tabaci and two sp subspecies of Limantia dispar on the right. We wanted to use species delimitation statistics to test the predefined groups. On the left are the results for Bamesia tabaci, on the right are the results for Limantria dispar. You'll see for Bamesia tabaci, the 24 predefined groups were all supported with our species delimitation measures, whereas on the right, Limantria dispar resulted in an unresolved phylogeny and we were unable to test the two subspecies. So then we took our naked phylogenies and used our tip to root approach. We started at the tips and worked our way back asking along the way where is their taxonomic distinctiveness. The results are seen here indicated by blue hashes. You'll see that that indicates taxonomic distinctiveness. So we've identified on the left five additional areas for Bamesia tabaci and six on the right for Limantria dispar. So what are the implications of our results? This answers the who cares part. For Bamesia tabaci, if we were to change the names and elevate all the genetic groups to species level and the new ones that we've described here, there would be downstream issues, including international and local trade regulations, because now the new species names would have to be incorporated into those documents. And also chemical companies would now have to test their insecticide against each described species. For Limantria dispar, CO1 shouldn't be used to identify subspecies as the resulting phylogeny was unresolved. More genes are needed to verify our results, and if that's the case, the taxonomy should be revisited. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video abstract. Please feel free to download our paper and send any queries to the email below. And my co-authors for the paper. My co-authors for the paper are Karen Armstrong, who's also here at Lincoln University. Nice. The approach of using two cytochrome oxidase in Australia. Our paper. Uh,